Coming to DARPA is like grabbing the nose cone of a rocket and holding on for dear life. DARPA's the place where if you don't invent the internet, you only get a B. A DARPA program manager quite literally invents tomorrow. Coming to work every day and being humbled by that. DARPA is not one person or one place. It's a collection of people that are excited about moving technology forward. DARPA Forward is taking national security innovation on the road. From August to December 2022, six regional events held at leading research and development universities nationwide will connect Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency leaders with new communities of talent and partnerships. The ultimate goal? To energize regional and national innovation ecosystems, fuel breakthroughs in national security, and help deliver the U.S. technological advantage. DARPA Forward participants will hear from world-renowned scientists, accomplished innovators, and senior defense leaders on new capabilities, as well as the rapidly evolving challenges faced by warfighters. We sat down with the director of DARPA, Dr. Stephanie Tompkins, who will cover how the agency works and how best to engage with us. We'll also hear from Dr. Max Schulacher at MIT, who had an early career opportunity to join the DARPA innovation ecosystem and Lucia White, graduate student at the University of Wisconsin and member of the U.S. Space Force, who will participate in DARPA Forward as a 2022 DARPA riser. Here's Dr. Tompkins. So DARPA has historically had some kind of really big conference or symposium every few years going back as far as I can remember. We typically hold one big event somewhere West Coast, East Coast. We did do one in St. Louis. But I think what characterizes all of them, they're fantastic events, but they are events that tend to drive more towards DARPA insiders. Because if you're going to take the time and you're going to pay the money and you're going to travel, you have to have some sense that there is a real value for you. And my worry is always that there are amazing people with amazing ideas hidden across the country for whom we have not reached that threshold where it makes sense for them to invest the time to come find us. And so it really feels like we need to find a way to come find them. And so, you know, the idea was to figure out how we can regionally cover as much of the United States as we could and get as close as we could so that we might be within just a couple hours access for as many people as possible. And then we've asked the host institutions, these amazing research universities, if they would ignite their communities, you know, whether they are science communities or whether they're entrepreneurial and startups, all across not just their home city, but across their region as far out as they possibly can. So we can try to bring people together that we've never met before and maybe find the next world-changing idea that we would have missed if we didn't do DARPA Forward. DARPA Forward is hosting events at Colorado State University, Washington State University, The Ohio State University, Georgia Institute of Technology, Texas A&M University, and the University of California, San Diego. The conferences are an opportunity for new talent and familiar partners to find inspiration and contribute to the DARPA mission to make pivotal investments in breakthrough technologies for national security. We look for somebody with a really adventurous spirit. Obviously, we're looking for people who are deeply technically competent because they actually have to understand whether or not the things they want to do are possible or, you know, as we like to say, just barely on the right side of impossible. We're looking for people who are passionate, who have this real sense of urgency to make a difference because they are the ones who are leading the way. So we are looking for people who get up every morning with a sense of what they have to do and this idea that they are running up against time to get it done. I really do think it's this sense of urgency that everything in the agency helps to create. And, you know, with that urgency, we also have new people coming in and new people leaving all the time, which allows fresh ideas to come through. So tolerance for risk, willingness to say yes to just about anything, those kinds of things are important. But I think the urgency is a huge driver that enables the rest of it. With DARPA Forward, the agency has newly ignited the spark of innovation. DARPA inspires in a new generation the desire to help change the world for the better and recognition that working with DARPA is a way to do it. The most obvious way to get involved early on, for example, if you're a graduate student or a very young, brand new researcher, is to do it through DARPA projects that already exist. You're probably not going to be leading them. You're going to be part of the team. But it is a great way to get a sense of what it's like to work on a DARPA problem 
I think that is the kind of thing that has been what we're told really important for a lot of the people who are involved with DARPA. And we find out that they had some kind of early involvement as a student researcher, for example, on a project. But We are actually going to be releasing some information on a new initiative where we're going to be looking at more ways to pull people in early. And we certainly have different kinds of early career opportunities. So we have things like the Young Faculty Award Program, which really focuses on faculty who are in sort of the first seven years, for example, of their academic career or the equivalent level of experience if you happen to be in industry. We call it the Young Faculty Award Program. It doesn't have to be just for faculty members. But the idea is that we release a call for proposals once a year, different topics every year, and we try to use the program to help those people really get immersed in the DARPA culture, and we introduce them to bigger DARPA programs and bigger DARPA communities with the hope that they're going to want to keep on doing this after the program's over. One of the things we started doing a couple of DARPA conferences ago was a program called DARPA Risers. And what we do is we're looking for young rising stars, people who are working in defense-related work. They may not even know it, but the idea is that the research that they're doing is relevant to defense problems. And they look like people who really have the potential to have that kind of DARPA spirit that we're always looking for. And so across all six events, both DARPA program managers And our host institutions and all of their stakeholder partners have nominated DARPA risers. So we're looking forward to meeting all of them. We do also hope to stay in touch with these risers, not just the ones that we're nominating for this particular round, but for all future conferences and essentially create a much broader community of people from which we can draw potentially for future DARPA program managers or DARPA researchers who are funded by DARPA or DARPA support staff. DARPA risers are up and coming standouts in their fields whose research is related to national security and demonstrates the potential to lead to technological surprise, the heart of DARPA's mission. The RISERS program provides individuals in the early stages of their research career with a unique opportunity to be recognized for their notable work and to present their ideas directly to DARPA. The RISERS program provides individuals in early stages of their research careers with a unique opportunity to be recognized for their notable work and to present their ideas directly to DARPA. Major Lucia White was recently nominated to serve in the 2022 DARPA Forward class and will be presenting her work at the Texas A&M event. Here, she discusses her background, how this opportunity will impact her career, and how she hopes to give back. From a young age, I was always fascinated with space and looking up at the sky at night. And then both of my parents were engineers, so I guess it kind of runs in my blood to want to be a scientist or an engineer. And that's how I found myself going to the Air Force Academy and majoring in biology. I'm getting another master's degree so I can go teach biology back at my alma mater. So I'm really excited about that. Project Tasty is the first plant fungal experiment on the International Space Station. We're going to look at how we can improve plant growth and microgravity because plants grow kind of wimpy in space because they don't have gravity that they're used to here on Earth. So it's difficult for root systems to grow. With my research, I work with a beneficial microbe called Trichoderma hasianum, and that microbe kind of acts like a space miracle grow, if you will, or at least we're hoping it will. So when a plant is stressed, it builds resiliency in the plant root system and in the plant itself. So we're hoping that these plants in space, they'll grow much better and be able to sustain. For DARPA Forward, DARPA program managers and faculty at universities near each event identified a small group of early career scientists and engineers to join the 2022 DARPA Risers cohort. I had an interest in Project Cornucopia, so I reached out to their project lead, Dr. Molly John, and she was the one that nominated me. I'm just going to interject here with a shameless Voices from DARPA plug. We highlighted Dr. John's work in a previous episode called The Future of Food, Meals for Microbes. Check it out if you can. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled podcast. I feel being a DARPA riser will allow me more opportunities to pursue the research that I really want to do. I hope to give back by one day 
being a, a project lead at DARPA. I'm really passionate about the spaceflight environment, but more specifically for problems here on Earth, such as food security issues and climate change. I'm really excited about going down to Texas A&M, not only to present my research, but to also you know, talk to other people and see what other research is going on as well. A lot of networking and a lot of things that maybe be applicable to what I'm actually doing and can help my research. Dr. Max Schulacher is an assistant professor in electrical engineering and computer science at MIT. He was a 2015 DARPA riser and currently serves as a DARPA program performer. Our focus is in the broad area of this new kind of discipline that we like to call nanosystems, which is basically taking new technologies, you know, whether they be materials or devices or sensors, and figuring out new ways to integrate them into a larger system in order to perform some new type of application. One example could be a new type of sensor that we integrate at a very large scale to do some you know, healthcare diagnostic application. Another example could be the work I'm very fortunate to be doing with DARPA, would be integrating multiple different new technologies in order to build three-dimensional chips or high-performance computing applications. It's Starpa's hope that, 20 years from now, people will look back at the conversations we had during the DARPA Forward series and recognize the germination of ideas that created a better future. The DARPA Riser experience, it really was a defining and extremely impactful moment for me in my career and also in my larger ambitions for what I want to try and achieve you know, professionally and the impact that I wanted to have. DARPA was a pretty intimidating agency to me, perhaps by design. It was a heavy hitting place where if you wanted to do something really, really tough, but have the resources to execute a real vision, that was the place to go. And when I went to the DARPA Wait What event as a DARPA riser. It was really remarkable because I got to meet so many different program managers, the deputy director of DARPA, the director of DARPA at the time. And it really showed me two things. One is that there are people behind the agency who really make it work. And it's a remarkable group of people who believe in the mission and work just as hard as the performers to make the program successful. So that was great to see. And it was also really exciting to see that the goal of DARPA, in my opinion, and of every program manager I talked to, was to do really impactful work. Our programs and our people are part of DARPA for just a few years. So we're looking for new talent and new partners in the innovation ecosystem. What I learned and was really impressed upon me at that event and all my interactions with DARPA since then has been that DARPA works very differently. That mantra of DARPA hard problem is something that I think is really in DARPA's DNA. It's where if you have a very difficult problem that would have very high impact, DARPA is willing to take that journey with a performer and also support it to the level in which it needs to be supported to see it successful. It really got me very excited about working with DARPA and luckily I was able to do so in the years afterwards. We continued working with our program manager to define you know, what the next step in that journey should look like. With his guidance and support, we're able to shape what a new program would look like. So it was a pretty painless path to go from the DARPA riser to a performer. The only thing that matters is the merit of the idea that you present, kind of how feasible of a project you're proposing and how big of an impact it will be. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter who you come from, if you've worked with DARPA before or not. DARPA hard problems, collaborative culture, technical excellence. Here's Dr. Tompkins again. One of the joys of being at DARPA is you tend to be excited about just about everything. So we should caveat this by reminding everybody that we have about 250 active programs at any moment in time, and we're starting about 50 new ones a year. So it's not just about having a hard time having favorites, it's that we have so much going on. And by definition, if we approved it to go forward, it means we're excited about it. But the kinds of things that might be of interest to people coming to DARPA forward Often, these are going to be things that have spillover potential to society. So they're not just national security problems, but they're the kinds of things that might affect their lives as just individual humans. And so the kinds of things there are the things that we're doing in the world of supply chains and logistics. And it's sort of funny because these are things that traditionally everyone thinks is really boring. We're not setting world records in anything. We're trying to fix the stuff behind the scenes that nobody ever really gives any thought to. I think the pandemic's done a good job of helping people to realize how important supply chains really are. And DARPA's actually been thinking about this, of course, for quite a while. 
we've had a number of investments historically in the idea of rather than transporting things, in the idea of making what you need where and when you need it from whatever local resources you can get a hold of. And so the most extreme examples would be things like our atmospheric water extraction program, where you want to be able to extract water directly from the air, even the most arid desert air that you could imagine. We have two different programs focused on extracting resources, either from waste materials such as plastics, or again, from the air and from water to create food. Very much focused on nutrition, starting to think about taste. So we might not yet be ready for, uh, you know, kind of the eating competition where everybody dives in, but we're making some really exciting progress on things that could be transformative in that world. We've been working for years on being able to develop medicines, pharmaceuticals, right where you need them. And it just seems like there's kind of a wave of technology that's making this available, that's allowing us to think about more and more things. At the same time, we have other program managers who are thinking about how, how you do transport things. So you're going to have to move something from point A to point B. Do we have different ways of doing that? So the Liberty Lifter program is an example of an aircraft that's much larger than any seaplane that's ever been built before that might have a completely different space in the whole trade space of logistics. And we also have people who are just thinking about the complexity of supply chains in general. So we have a new program looking at supply and demand networks and how we can stress test them. So, you know, who would have thought that maybe your sixth or seventh tier supplier, if something goes wrong with one of them, it could cause all kinds of problems to your major DOD manufacturers because we don't have that kind of insight. And the idea is that we can automatically develop that insight in real time and be able to do stress tests to figure out where things would break and how far we can take the system and how we could fix it. So lots of stuff going on in that world. And while there's more and more and more, we'll kind of leave it with that topic because I think there's a lot of richness there that might excite the DARPA Forward community. We work with all kinds of organizations and all kinds of people. Wherever we can find the talent and people who are willing to roll up their sleeves and work like crazy, we're willing to have them be part of the DARPA family. We encourage anyone interested in learning more about the agency to register for one of the six DARPA Forward events and help us to achieve our vision to ensure breakthrough technologies reach the warfighter. Thanks for tuning in to this Voices from DARPA podcast, and special thanks to Tom Shortridge for producing this episode and Heather Dees for her assistance. For more information on the DARPA Forward events or to register, visit forward.darpa.mil. For more information about the agency and to listen to more Voices from DARPA podcast episodes, visit darpa.mil.